Tamuana, what is up guys? So today I'm going to be showing you a pretty fun matchup um, running my dinosaur deck. I was actually able to get one of my favorite cards out. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and show you guys the whole matchup. It wasn't, yes I got the victory, but it wasn't like my best of plays if that makes sense. We did just get the helm as you can see. Um, so one of my favorite cards is Zakama which we just pulled in the draw. So as you can see, we have both Helm of the Host and we have a Zakama here, um, as well as Zapata, Zapalta. I just call him Zapata on stream. Um, and as you can see, we're just playing um, a Sapling deck. So we're gonna open up. We're gonna go ahead and throw our forest down just because I didn't want him to see the mountain just quite yet, um, which we are gonna go ahead and throw down next turn as I'm gonna play the Forerunner. And, um, Something fun about this deck is Helm of the Host is actually super cheap. It's four to cast and then five to equip. And at the beginning of combat, whether you swing or not, you get a copy. And even of the creature it's equipped to, excuse me, whether it's legendary or not. Now, guys, keep in mind, Zakama is a legendary creature, le legendary elder dinosaur. And <laughs> if you equipped him, he, you can make a lot of copies of a very powerful dinosaur. Okay, so as you can see, I dropped four runner, and that's going to go ahead and pull out my... My needle tooth raptor, so that way I can go ahead and start start taking out enemy opposing creatures, especially since he has poison tip archer out. Um, that could start potentially ramping up to be you know kind of a problem. So we're gonna go ahead and try and take that out. Um, anytime a creature dies on the battlefield, I take one damage, and that's what uh, poison tip does, and that does include himself. Or when he does die himself, so that's why I'm going to soak the one damage to try and take him out with needle tooth. Um, as you can see, we do wait here for a while. I'm playing against one of those guys that just takes forever between his turns. Not really planning ahead of time. Um, he does drop the uh, Thalid Omnivore, which is a cool, is a pretty cool card. It does save him quite a bit as far as life gain, because anytime a creature is about to die, he can actually tap one mana and sacrifice that creature and gain some life, and he gets plus two, plus two. Um, I believe the creature has to be a Sapperling for him to gain the life, but regardless, he does get plus two, plus two. So as you can see, I drop Needle Tooth. It does trigger Forerunner. And that's going to deal one damage to all creatures, but that that includes Needle Tooth, which is going to then do five damage to target creature and opponent controls. And I'm going to go ahead and take out that Poison Tip Archer with him. <coughs> and there it is. He goes ahead and triggers Omnivore. And yeah, I don't think that gained him any life, but that was actually kind of a needless thing for him to do, to be honest. He does that quite a bit. I think it's more of one of those habit things. I mean... May as well get him the plus two in case I swing maybe or something, but even then. So he's going to go ahead and play another poison tip, uh, which I'm like, oh, goodness gracious, got to take care of another one. <laughs> so he goes ahead and swings out the Thalid Omnivore and the Death Bloom. So he's going to think to himself, hey, if he, as you can see, he's got two untapped mana. And it can be of any color. It's one mana to essentially for him to consume another creature and get the plus two, plus two. Um, so I go ahead and just let it, let it pan out, let it swing at me. I do pull a Mortal Sun, which is going to be very beautiful for as far as card draw power goes, as well as the cost of creatures as in spells, as well as the plus one, plus one to all, all my creatures. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the Ripjaw Raptor. It's going to trigger Forerunner, take action. That's going to be my method of taking care of that poison tip once again. Boom. And bear in mind, guys, had I blocked in that last swing, it would have procced poison tip. If anything had died, which it more than likely would have, He's going to go ahead and uh, utilize the fungal and take out my needle tooth, but I'm at least going to still take out his poison tip um, since it does end up on the stack there. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. So he's going to go ahead and soak it. Like I said, he didn't really need to. I guess it's in case I swing. I'm going to go ahead and drop Siege Horn. That way he can get the 2 one, one counters from Pronk and Forerunner. Forerunner's got two more swings in him. Boom, that's the first one. I take out that sapling. He's tapped out, so he couldn't benefit from it, which is kind of a dumb move on his part, to be honest, because he could have gained some life from soaking the sapling versus the uh, poison tip. So now I've got a 4-4 Siege Horn Ceratops, as well as a 4-5 Ripjaw Raptor. So I'm sitting fairly pretty at the moment. Um, like I said, he could always soak up that sapling, get plus 2, plus 2, and gain a life this time, make him a 5-5, which I, I guess I could theoretically joint block. Um... With Ripjaw and Siege Horn. I would lose one, but whichever one he chooses to kill, the other one would get beefier, which looks like that's, well, that's what I don't do. How intriguing. I feel like I would have normally joint blocked. So that way, regardless, he would have died. 
And I could have procced both, theoretically. It just depends on which one would die, which in this case wouldn't really matter too much. Because as I could play, I could slam Immortal Sun next turn and um, start getting draw power that way. So I, And I had a feeling he would have picked Ripjaw had I joint blocked. I don't know. Well, you know what? If I was him, I may actually take Siegehorn. Because Siegehorn can get pretty big with Forerunner being out on the battlefield. And if I don't have a murder card, that could get pretty rough. So I'm going to go ahead and drop my Timber Gorge. Yep. Especially because I have six mana, I'm going to go ahead and try and slam Immortal Sun. And there's nothing I can do with the planes anyway. So I may as well. Oh, do I play Voice of Plenty? And I think I slam Immortal Sun. Get the plus one, plus one, and draw power. Oh, I go voice of plenty. Why would I do that? I mean, I guess I could see with his... He could theoretically take out Forerunner. This is my way of pulling a kill card. I mean, I see what like what it is I'm trying to do here, and that is try and pull a kill card, get him to, to target voice of plenty instead of Forerunner, because Forerunner is the main meat and potatoes of this deck. Um... Especially with him having two cards in hand and him going into a draw. That way, if a burn card is going to be used, then it's going to be used on that versus Forerunner. I can kind of see it, but I shouldn't have I shouldn't have played Timber. Well, I guess I could. There's nothing I could have done with, with the planes there being three mana untapped. So he's going to go ahead and swing with Thalid Omnivore. I think I block with Voice of Plenty. Which I honestly should have done Siege Horn. But what I was trying to do is I was wanting to keep Siege Horn ultimately. So I'll go ahead and block with uh, Voice of Plenty. Probably once again not the smartest move. Yeah, especially because he's going to do his Saprolene. going to soak him. Get plus two, plus two. Gain two life. Like I said, guys, the beginning. This is my, <laughs> some of my best performances. But we still get the victory. And it does end up being pretty cool. So I get the Needle Tooth. Go ahead and drop a planes and slam my immortal sun. Gonna get the plus two plus two. All right, so um, kind of considering swinging, but I'm gonna go ahead and hold back. I've got seven seven life at the moment, and I. I'm going to be able to start doing things like Zakama, Helm of the Host. And guys, one of the beauty, beautiful parts about Zakama Primal Calamity is whenever you cast him, you untap all your land. So it's essentially like casting him for free. You just have to have the initial mana to pay for him, and then you get all your mana back. So my thought process is maybe hold out, and then get Zakama, and then get Helm of the Host. Because Helm of the Host is going to be, in order to cast it and then equip it, it's going to be about the same price as Zakama since I have Immortal Sun out. It's going to be eight mana, three to cast, five to, to equip. All right, so he's thinking. And bear in mind, guys, Forerunner can keep getting proc to from Helm of the Host. It's any time a dinosaur enters the battlefield under your control. and That's going to include copies. So theoretically, if you have Forerunner out and you put Helm of the Host with Polyraptor, that can get pretty pretty gnarly. So he's going to swing in with his Omnivore. I think I just, yeah, just go ahead and joint block. Because he can actually do, if I don't block this, he could soak up both of those Saprolings and get up to 7-7, seven, seven, and that would kill me. So he, I didn't really have a choice here. I had to take out Siege Horn. Sorry, Siege Horn. He's going to gain the life. No biggie. Like I said, we're going to be getting some combat out next turn anyway. So Immortal Sun Prox, I get Druid of the Cowl, and Ixalan. Now I do have Ixalan, which is, I think I, I'm pretty sure I mess with him a little bit with that. Uh, Decline. And we're going to go ahead and drop Helm of the Host for three mana. Since all, as you can see, all my mana untapped, we're going to go ahead and equip Helm of the Host onto Zakama. Now guys, this creature is a savage. Look at that, legendary. So he's going to get Haste. Boom, I'm going to swing in with that initial 10 hit. The three-headed dinosaur, we're about to get three of the three-headed dinosaurs. I accidentally clicked that. I never do the little emotes thing. I just, I'm kind of, I'm against that troll life, so. I always uh, forget to mute the other player, though. 
So as you're going to see, he's going to be thinking to himself, all right, so what am I going to do about a 10-10 with a bunch of things, trample, I think he has vigilance, reach, as well as you pay three mana, you can deal three damage to target creature, you can pay three mana, and you gain three life, or you can pay three mana, and I think it's draw a card, or Zakama's abilities that you can do. Yes. Oh, destroy target artifact or enchantment. My bad. Not draw a card. It has vigilance, reach, and trample. Savage creature. The beast of the beasts. And he's thinking, he's like, oh my goodness. Now, bear in mind, guys, I've got an Ixalan, so I could really stick it to him by playing the Ixalan when I get the three Zakamas. And then do a Allosaurus or Ripjaw in order to clear out those Saprolings and open up the battlefield. So I'm going to go ahead and do a forest. I'm going to go ahead and run. Oh, that's right. I'll go needle tooth. Yeah, I go. I think I go safe and go Ixalan. So that way he doesn't gain two life from each of those saplings. Because he can, he can pay two. He can pay two and take out two of those, gain four life. So I'm going to go, go ahead and do Ixalan. Take the Omnivore. I think he still does it so he can gain the life. Which would be a pretty smart move, especially since I've got two out. He, I don't think he realizes that I've got haste because Helm of the Host says the legendary creature. If it's a legendary creature, then it gains haste as well. Um, so regardless, him gaining this life isn't going to help him because that's going to be thirty damage coming in at him. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play a Rip Jaw so that way he can proc Forerunner and take out that last Saprolane, clear the battlefield, get my card draw from Rip Jaw. Drawn to another Ixalan. Very nice. Helm of the Host. There it is. Boom, 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 boom. Savage. Oof. You gotta love having three Zagamas. So, appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Scottoria. I just want to do my live stream coverage. Magic Gathering Arena. Um, at Clash Scottoria is my Twitter. You guys follow me there so you can catch, see whenever I drop new videos, pictures of my cat or whatever. Um, and then here, guys, make sure you guys click that subscribe, little bell icon, like button if you enjoyed the video. And discord.gg slash the kill squad, all one word. Um, we talk about all kinds of different gaming uh, that, that you guys play. We have several members of the kill squad in there. And we talk about anything from Path of Exile to Magic Gathering to taco Tuesdays or whatever. Um, so appreciate y'all for tuning in. I'll see you again very soon.